Paul said, I, I was not negligent to this heavenly calling, but it takes a lot of resources. And that when God wants to help a man, beyond just giving you business ideas, he brings strategic men. Strategic men are even enhancers to your business. Your business prospers based on who you do the business with. Not just the business. Any business can make you a multi-millionaire. Any scriptural godly business can make you a millionaire and billionaire depending on who you do it with. Are we together? So even using the works of your hands, when God wants to help you, He will help you to serve kings. Because the wealth of any nation is in the palace. As much as it's in the field, when it is extracted from the field, it is taken to the palace. That is where it is taught. And if you cannot access the palace, nor the heart of Pharaoh, you will remain poor. When you see me cry about favor all the time, and I teach you relationship principles all the time, is because this is, is not one of the many ways. I tell you sincerely, it is the accelerator factor in your becoming prosperous. So when God says it is a season of abundance, that means He's bringing you greater wisdom. That means He's purging your heart. That means that He's granting the blessing upon the work of your hands. But more than that, it means that you must begin to pray. He says you ask for the rain at the time of the latter rain. When you see that the time has come, you participate in prayer. Lord, who is that one man? Who is that one woman strategically connected? And you learn how to discern them and receive them when they come. Because if you pray like I have taught you, and you do not know how your answer looks like, your answer will pass you. And God will say, I answered you since January. And you kept driving away your answer. Your answer came as a destiny helper, but because you do not know what to do with destiny helpers, you push them away. Can I show you one more thing before we pray? Is someone learning? Who is ready to receive? Hmm. Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am walking in the garden, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am the I've taught you in this place that relationships are advantageous connections. I've taught you that relationships must be mutually beneficial, not equally beneficial but mutually beneficial to the parties that are involved. Listen carefully now. I've taught you in this place that relationships are bridges, if you recall, to an exceptional life. The bridge between your yesterday and tomorrow, the quality of your yesterday and tomorrow is a relationship. The same way you can stand because a bridge is broken. You are seen where you need to go to, but you are not able to get there because the bridge is broken that is what happens to a man when the strategic relationships that are meant to birth prophecy in your life when those relationships are not there you can even see not by vision you can see the kind of future you should step in but never get into that future i've taught you that relationships are currencies please hear me prophetic people relationships are currencies that they can buy Anything money can buy. Anything money can buy. Relationships can buy it. Let me say it again. Anything mo You think about anything money can buy. Relationships can buy it. If money can buy you a house, relationships can buy that house. If money can buy you any means of mobility, relationships can do that. If money can fund a crusade, relationships can fund a crusade. Anything at all. Relationships are currencies. In my teaching here, teaching you on true riches, and you may want to make reference to that, one of the currencies that we use to buy money is relationships. Now listen carefully. I taught you here that the easiest way to succeed in life is through strategic relationships and destiny connections. The easiest way to succeed, even financially, 
But among the many things I've taught you about relationships, I want to recall one that is important to connect with this prophetic word. Recall that I taught you the tripartite nature of relationships. Remember that? I taught you that you have your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. Let me take that again. Your relationship with God, your relationship with men, and your relationship with things. You must have a healthy relationship with God, you must have a healthy relationship with men, and you must have a healthy relationship with things. If you default in any one of these levels of relationship, you will pay for it. There is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with God to succeed. There is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with men to succeed. And there is a way you are supposed to have a relationship with things to succeed. For instance, allowing things control you, allowing things possess you, is a bad way of relating with things. That includes money. It is often said that money is a bad, ma a, a, a bad master but a good slave. You see that now? There is a healthy way to relate with things such that you profit from their presence but you are not corrupted by their presence. There is a way to handle money. There is a way to handle increase. There is a way to handle influence. There is a way to handle opportunities in a way that becomes profiting unto you but does not corrupt nor destroy you. There is a way to work with men such that you can derive maximum utility from their presence without being corrupted by their presence. Are we together now? If you recall, I taught you that there are two ways you step into the world of greatness, the world of men. One is the world through the door of need and the door of value. That if you step into the presence of greatness through the door of need, you will be in the presence of greatness, but you will remain a slave there forever. But when you step in through the door of value, even the great will acknowledge you as great. Is someone learning tonight? You see the implication of receiving prophetic words. You don't just jump and celebrate. You understand the implication. And then you will see the results. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. If he has spoken on his own path, he is ready to do it. But it is your receiving, aligning with prophecy and engaging it by faith. That's what delivers to your table. Hallelujah. I taught you that your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Your relationship with God, please write it down. This is how wealth manifests. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Please write that down. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor now gives you access to men and systems your relationship with god gives you access to wisdom and favor when you have wisdom and favor it will now give you access to men and it will give you access to systems men will now give you access to resources and influence you see how it works Men will now give you access to resources and they will now give you access to influence. Then you finally use the influence and the resources for your profiting and to serve the purposes of the kingdom. This is how it happens. I will, I will read that whole equation for you again. Your relationship with God gives you access to wisdom and favor. You have that down? Wisdom and favor gives you access to men and gives you access to systems. Men now give you access to resources and give you access to influence. And then you now use your resources and the influence that you now have to serve God, to be a blessing to men and to live a successful life. This is how it happens. Compromise on this equation and you will not make it in life, even financially. It starts with God. 
but it ends with a successful life. And I'm demystifying that wealth equation for you. That it is not as mysterious as people have made it. Your relationship with God, grant among the many things that relationship affords you, is wisdom and favor. Please look up. When you have wisdom and favor, genuine wisdom and favor, you will never be alone. Men will come. Because men were not designed to just come on their own. They come in response to wisdom. They come in response to favor. The men carrying the money you need, the men who will give the influence you need to reign in life, they will only answer to wisdom and favor. Say wisdom. Say favor. One more time. Say wisdom and favor. So it starts with God. Your loyalty to God, your covenant with God, your loving Jesus, your worshipping Him, your studying scripture, your praying, your accessing resources. What it does to you is that it imparts wisdom. When wisdom arrives and favor arrives, get ready, men are on their way coming. When the men come, they will come like the Magi, bringing you gifts of gold, of frankincense and myrrh, whether they are coming in exchange to your value or coming to reward your wisdom, it doesn't matter. One thing you will never lack when men are with you is resources. Listen, you are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you. You are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you. Let me say that again. You are as wealthy as the men whose hands are open towards you. Imagine that the men who open their hands towards you are called Pharaoh, Solomon, and Abimelech. Will you be poor? No. Your relationship with God, purified motif, loving Jesus, understanding the purpose of abundance, the purpose of kingdom wealth, understanding the purpose of the blessing of the Lord, all together impacts upon your life, among other things, wisdom and favor. When you carry wisdom and favor, you become a living magnet. You will attract men. I tell you, get wisdom and get favor and remain inside a hole. Men will come and meet you there. The moment you see men coming to you, listen please, once you see men coming, know that with men are resources. Please look up. There was the wisdom of God that was in the prophet Elisha. Am I right on that? When Naaman had, who looked for who? Naaman was a captain of the Syrian army. But he wanted to go and meet Elisha at the recommendation of the slave girl. Question, when Naaman became healed, did he carry gifts to go back? That is always what happens in the presence of wisdom. The greatest corporations in the world, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, is a business of numbers. The reason why they are wealthy to the capacity that they are today is because the little bit you are bringing is multiplied across the billions of the people on earth. Numbers. You are as wealthy, I will tell you again, as the men whose hands are open towards you. It is an irrefutable strategy. Look up please. This is my phone. I'm holding a mobile device on my hand. What made the company that produced this mobile device billionaires in dollars? Is it that they were the most creative in the world? No. But they spread their products to men many enough. Many people wanted their products enough. Why do you produce something very exceptional and then spend money advertising? Who are you advertising to? The men who will buy the products. Your relationship with God brings you wisdom, brings you favor. When wisdom and favor rests upon your life, watch this koinonia, listen to me. It brings you resources and also brings you influence. Are we together? When you have resources and influence, then you can now use it to serve the purposes of the kingdom, 
to become a blessing to many like you covenanted with God and to live a successful life. Show me anybody who has prospered in the kingdom, prospering with the dignity of kingdom integrity. You will see this formula. It started with God. God imparted wisdom upon Solomon and with that wisdom came favor and Solomon's wisdom and favor attracted people and attracted the kings of the earth. Now he had enough resources and one day he built God a house. You always see the pattern. That means you can reverse engineer this thing I just said to explain why your hands are empty. That means if your hands are empty, it is because enough men have not opened their hands. And if enough men have not opened their hands, it is because wisdom and favor has not drawn them. And if wisdom and favor is lacking, you go to God. Does any man lack wisdom? He says, let him go to God that giveth. You want to prosper? I have shown you a key that converts this prophecy. Father, I thank you because you are the giver of wisdom. Are you saying that it's unwise to ask God directly for money? He can be faithful, but this is the equation. This is how it comes. You don't just say, oh God, please give me money now. Is it that you are not? That's not how it works. Now, a miracle can happen to solve an immediate problem. But let me tell you classically, God answers people's wealth problem by giving them wisdom and favor. Wisdom and favor attract men. Men come with resources and influence. Once you have that, it is called financial dominion. Because you can repeat the circle again. For as long as your relationship with God. Now, if you are Satan and you want to make someone poor, what will be the greatest point of your target? It's not men. It's the person's relationship with God. Whatever I can do to cut you from receiving wisdom and favor, I've done you a disservice as far as becoming prosperous is concerned. Now, are you saying that true prosperity should not make you leave God? Does this make sense to you now? True prosperity does not make believers leave God. It's a lie. It's the system of the world that tries to bypass this formula. You should be more spiritual the wealthier you are becoming. Because God should be the source of that wisdom. That means your fellowship with God becomes the continuity for more wisdom, greater wisdom. So in what way does somebody become prosperous? And then now forget God. That means that person is going to go down soon. All wealth starts from the realm of the spirit. If you don't receive it from God Almighty, you will receive it from a familiar spirit. Both of them have covenants you must answer to. Are we together? If you go to Satan and say, make me wealthy, you say, that is fine. But here are my terms. You will serve me. You will worship me. You will draw people to me. You will destroy life. You will destroy homes. You will live a foolish life. You will not be able to spend your money. You will die miserably. Is this a covenant? You say, fine. Once you sign it, what Satan will give you is also wisdom and favor. He won't give you money. It's still the same formula. He will place something on your life that makes you unusually wise to your detriment. With that wisdom, you will come up with services and products that will still attract the same men. When those men come, they will still bring the resources. But the only thing is that when you have the resources and the influence, Satan will remind you, remember what we agreed on. And if you say, don't disturb me, you will, you will be surprised. All he needs to do is withdraw what brought them. And what you have, no matter how much, will deplete mysteriously. True prosperity is not money. True prosperity is your relationship with God. And the wisdom that is endlessly flowing from Him to you. And the favor that endlessly comes. That capacity to gravitate strategic relationships to your life. And with the coming of those relationships will be resources and influence. And with the resources and influence, you are now mandated to remember the reason why He blessed you. To be a blessing to the world. Live a responsible life with dignity. Advance the program of God. So when God says it's a season of abundance, what in your understanding do you think he's saying? He's saying it's a season to get closer to me like never before. Did you get that now? Because wisdom truly comes from God. 
it can be imparted through careers but ultimately wisdom comes from god hmm. wealth is relational all way relationship with god then relationship with men then relationship with things and that includes resources apostle so what becomes the answer for my empty handedness now the absence of men enough men to bless you or a certain kind of men who don't have the means to bless you and i've taught you here and i will still pray that prayer for you tonight that when god wants to help you he relocates your audience did i teach you that he brings to you strategic men find a way of believing this strategic people strategic people the Bible says that if you faith in the days of adversity, your strength is small. This video you just watched now, we believe that it has increased strength in you and it has set burdens in your heart. If you, are new, if you are new to this video, please subscribe to this channel. Click on the notification bell to get daily uploads, comments, like this video and God will bless you. Thank you.